Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Yunhai Ouyang from Fraser Harbor Institute. Uh, I will be introducing a newly developed method, CISO, for searching for material descriptors. So I start with some word by, uh, by some physicists. So scientific discovery often proceed from the accumulation accumulation of consistent data to the identification of functional dependence among the data. For example, a model that is able to predict yet unseen phenomena and ultimately a theory may be constructed to explain <coughs> the model with few simple principles. <coughs> and, uh, the set of a <laughs> So here is an example, the discovery of the law of uh, planetary motion. So uh, we know that uh, Tycho Brahe spent his lifetime on the astronomical observation and uh, passed his data into Kepler's hand on his desk. Then Kepler did the uh, data analytics and he spent four years tested the things of orbit and finally discovered the elliptical orbit. And we know that at that time the least square were not yet invented. Another example is the periodic table of element. And for the data accumulation, new elements were discovered at the rate of, of one per year, and up to 56 uh, were known by 1863. Then Mendeleev did the data analysis, analytics, and he envisioned his periodic table in a dream in 1869. Uh, Nice. So, so we see data analytics. It's important for scientific discovery. But uh, if we can't get a result from dreams, then we need to develop a method to uh, speed up the discovery. Okay. So uh, nowadays in material science, we don't need to spend uh, the whole lifetime to collect data, and uh, we already have a big data. For example, the nomad contain. 44 million of data, and the, the, the flow, 1.7 million with uh, 138 million of property calculated, and also the Springer materials uh, with over 400,000 experimental data. So here I will show you the state of the art of the uh, data analytics and the machine learning. So artificial neural network which build models in a way inspired by biological nervous system, for example, the AlphaGo. The symbolic regression, which learn a function by searching the space of mathematical expressions via genetic programming, for example, the, the Eureka software from this company. And also you can find many other machine learning methods from this book. Regularizing the regression trees near the neighbor support the vector machine and so on. But uh, in this talk, I will focus on complex thinking. Uh, the reason is that uh, it answers this important question, how to train a predictive model, not just a fitting. And, uh, and uh, Yang already gave a very nice talk, so I will skip this part here. Now, we apply the complex thinking for material science. So for any material property, we describe by a linear model. So here the P is the material property of interest, and the C are the coefficient, the F are the features, which are nonlinear function of, of basic input variables. Then we define the vector to be the set of features with the coefficient not a zero. Here is the workflow. So first, we perform uniform sampling of the uh, <coughs> signal or the material property P in the whole material space. Then we construct a feature space for, this, for the description of, of the property P. And then we do the specification of the linear model or the disk identification. Here I show you how we construct a feature space. So first, 
we need input of, of uh, initial feature space which contain the uh, input variables or we call it uh, uh, primary features. Also, we need a operate, operator set so that we can transform the basic variable to expand, expand the, the feature space. And here, the output, so phi n, the feature space of, of rung n. So the, the idea here is that uh, we apply the operator set to phi 0, we get a phi 1. We apply to phi 1, then we get a phi 2. And so for any phi n, we take the union of, of feature space from phi 0 to phi n minus 1. And uh, we note here the still uh, script here m <coughs> indicated meaningful combination. For example, we don't do the size plus energy with the, the plus operator. And uh, for uh, unary operator, for example, the log, the exponential, it only applies to the uh, phi 1. And uh, here, uh, we can know the size of any feature space phi n. For example, if the phi 0, the size of phi 0 is 10, and the, the number for binary operate is 5, then we will have uh, the phi 3 with the size of 10 to the 12. So it's a, a huge feature space. That means we need a, a good method to, to manage huge feature space for the sparse solution. And here are the popular uh, specifying operators. So uh, formally, the, the L0 should be used because it can give the uh, global optimal solutions. However, it is only limited to small feature space because it is NP-hard as Jiang has introduced it. The, the last law can uh, apply to large feature space, but uh, the only give poor solution when features are correlated. And also greedy algorithms such as the orthogonal matching pursuit, OMP, they are applicable to uh, huge feature space, but they usually end up with local optimum. So we need a better method for finding sparse solution. Sorry, just a question to connect yes. to the previous talk. So your second point, poor solution when features are correlated, was that what the previous Yes, so, so here the correlated means uh, coherent feature space. So the feature are highly correlate, uh, correlated. I mean, yes, they are now also go node, then they will have a problem to identify the best solution. Then we propose the CISO, a new method, which combine sure independent screening and, uh, and the specifying operators. So here the this is a, a, a dimension reduction method, which select a feature with the metric to be the inner product between the target property and any features. So for example here, the property P, we calculated the correlation of all the features with the P and selected the uh, highly correlated features with the P. So uh, uh, suppose we have a huge feature space then we start by C's to select a subspace which has a, 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 mod, a modest size so that the uh, uh, lower dimensional uh, model selection method can be applied. For example, the, the L0 or last or L2. Then from the subspace, we apply uh, the SO to find the best 1D descriptor. Here, 1D means only one uh, non-zero coefficient in the, uh, in the complex sensing model. And uh, we, then we check the leftover, the residual. If the residual is still large, then we will we, we'll go back to the whole space and do the things again. But now we replace the, the target property by the, uh, by the residual and uh, select the second, uh, the second subspace. For example, here, so uh, with the, the, the 1D descriptor, we calculate the residue, and then cease, uh, select the second subspace, which has a uh, good correlation with the residues. 
And then from the union of all the selected subspace, we apply SO again to find the best two D descriptor. And we, we, we do this until step A, which can yield a descriptor that uh, hit the uh, quality requirement. Now let's see a benchmark descriptor and identification for structural stability. So here uh, the property is the energy difference between the two structures. And for the training data, we take 82, uh, 82 energy differences between uh, energy difference of binary materials from DFD calculation. And for the primary feature, the input variables, they are atomic parameters, for example, the ionization potential, electron affinity, and so on. And all the data are obtained from the no matter the repository or uh, this paper. Now let's see the performance of CISO. So here I show you the training error against the, the <coughs> descriptor dimension by different uh, uh, SO method. <coughs> so here the orange uh, down triangle is the last one and the up triangle last one L0 and the green OMP blue is the L0, all with the same feature space. So we see uh, last or indeed give very poor result because uh, the, the correlation between features. And the uh, last or plus L0 and the OMP have a better solution, but the L0 of course give the, the best. However, even uh, uh, if for the best solution by L0, we see there is still a large training error higher than 40, then we would like to uh, try larger feature space to, to uh, reduce the training error. So we compare the CISO with the OMP. So here is the training error against the, the subspace size by CIS. So we see the CISO with uh, the SO to be L0 give much better results than the MP with the uh, subspace size. But uh, this is not the case for CISO with SO to be the lasso plus L0 because of the failure of the of, of lasso. Here, the, uh, uh, we use the same file tool which contains 10 to the five features. We further apply the CISO, well CISO means L0 to, to file two and the file three, <laughs> where the, the, the file three contains 10 to the 11 features. So we see uh, the descriptor has, has a systematically lower training error than from the file two. And also we compare our result to previous work. So we see our result systematically improved over the, this, this work. We, we also compare our result <coughs> to that obtained from the commercial software Eureka, which, which, which evaluated the 10 to the 12 function has a similar size with the first three here. So we compare here. So the, the, the blue uh, circle are all uh, well below the, the green line, except the first dimension here. Ah, yes. So uh, future space construction. So here, five zero is the, uh, the input variables, right? Then we apply the operator set to five zero, then we get a five one. <coughs> and we apply five one, we get a five two. And finally we find in the union of all this. So we, we also check the maximum uh, absolute error from the training. So we see the the blue uh, has the same trend. They are well below the, the orange. And uh, moreover, for the, 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 the blue circle, even for the 1D, it has a much lower uh, maximum uh, absolute error than the Eureka. So this result shows the CISO has the best performance. Uh, also, uh, the CISO is not, uh, not only for quantitative property, but also for classification. So, we, we define the L0 for classification of, of M group, where M is equal or larger than two in this form. So the loss function here 
the OIG, is the number of data in overlap region between I and G domain. For example, here we have three domain uh, approximated by convex R. So here the uh, loss function means the total data in each of the overlap the region. And the C is the sparse vector with zero or one element. And the lambda here is, is the parameter controlling the, the number of non-zero element in the, the uh, steam. Also, we need a metric of, uh, uh, for the C's for classification, because the, the C means uh, inner product for quantitative uh, property, but for classification, then we define the correlation to be the uh, the reciprocal of the, the the overlap. Here we plus one because uh, we want the uh, want the, this uh, quantity to have the range from zero to one. For example, here we have two group, blue and red. So the the number of all overlap data is four. So one, two, three, four. Now, application of CSO for classification, the case of metal, non-metal, we, we take experimental training data from sprinkler materials. And all the metal non, and non-metal of AXPY crystal are used, which is about 300. And here, the A belong to any element, and the B belong to P element. And also, A has coordination uh, Prehydrogen comprising of only B and vice versa. Also, we take all the stable element metal for the training. We also take experimental data for the primary feature, the ionization energy, electron affinity, atom covalent radius, electronegativity, wavelength, bound distance in crystal, coordination number, packing factor, atomic ratio. Now I show you how we get the best descriptor. So initially we use only uh, materials of the same pro uh, rock salt prototype, 128 materials. And here, these are intuition suggested primary feature. And uh, we can easily identify a descriptor for 100% classification. So here, uh, the D is from the structure, and all others are the atomic parameters. Then we increase the number of prototypes up to five, which means we include more chemical environment into the training. And the number of material, 216. Then we found that this primary feature can get a, a, a descriptor for 100% classification. And until we uh, add more primary feature, the coordination number. And this makes sense because we see different prototypes have different coordination environment. So we need this. Otherwise, we, we can't make a total classification. So with this primary feature, we again identify the descriptor for 100 personal classification of the data. Then we include more prototype, so up to 10, and uh, 259 materials. We use the same primary feature as here, and also find the descriptor for total classification. This is a 2D descriptor, two feature, but we see this descriptor is already quite complex, and uh, people may don't like this. Then I realized that uh, from this descriptor and the descriptor, the pattern, the bound distance minus radius, they appear very frequently. So I realized that uh, uh, the packing efficiency may be, uh, packing factor may be more efficient than this structure parameter. And indeed, when I, uh, in, when I add this primary feature into the phi zero, then I found a much simple descriptor the same training data, same prototype, but just uh, replace the, the, the string guy by, by the packing factor, we immediately get a, 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 a very simple descriptor. Finally, we increase the number of prototypes up to uh, 15. 
and also we include uh, 64 element metal. But then again, we found this primary uh, primary feature can't yet a, a descriptor for total classification. Then again, we realize that the atomic ratio is needed because you see here the aluminum oxide is A2 B3 and the, the TH3 P4, the A3 B4, and the here A1 B3. So they have a quite different atomic ratio. So after we include the atomic ratio A and B. Then again, we found a descriptor that uh, uh, can totally classify all these training materials. So here is the best, uh, uh, okay, the best descriptor for 99.2% to 99.2% uh, 99 classification of all the training data. And uh, so you see, this domain are metal, and this domain are non-metal. So the, we see the non-metal are are defined by all the uh, fluoride. And uh, here, the metal domain, so this is the gold, and uh, the U, A, C, and the gold, uh, indium. Uh, the key parameters of the descriptor can be real, uh, very well understood. For example, the packing factor, so high packing efficiency, <coughs> high interstitial charge, and then high propensity of being metal. And also for this one, the ratio of, of, of the uh, uh, electron activity. So high degree, the, the, the larger the value, the higher the degree of the ionic bonding, high uh, low interstitial charge, and finally high propensity of being uh, non-metal. So by understanding this, is thing, uh, it's no surprise to see that the, the lithium fluoride uh, is at the rightmost position because it, this uh, fluorine F has the largest uh, uh, electronegativity and the lithium has a very low electronegativity. And also uh, for this, the gold has, the, the, the indium has, has a, a larger, even uh, has lower negativity than the gold. So it comes at the leftmost. <coughs> now we uh, want to, uh, validate this descriptor. So normally the descriptor should be used to predict the uh, materials under normal pressure because in our training data, there's no any high pressure data uh, used. But uh, uh, we think that if the descriptor really carries some physical inside, then it can be extrapolated to high pressure. So we, we, we uh, from the database, we found three materials undergo the uh, insulator metal transition. So here are the three materials. They are non-metal under normal pressure, and the experiment showed they are metal under high pressure. <clears throat> and indeed, we see that uh, the three uh, blue square are in the blue domain, and the red uh, circle are in the, the metal domain. So our descriptor, they produced the experimental result. Then we make some prediction of, of insulator to metal transition. So here the, uh, with green lines uh, for the prediction. So uh, each green line repre represents one gigapass step. So for example, the, the silver I ordered. So uh, we count how many green bars, one, two, three, four, five, six, and nine, ten. So that means if we apply 10 gigapar, then the steel steel ionide will move to the uh, move to here, transition from from non-metal to metal, and the same for uh, these materials. So they are very close to the uh, uh, the boundary. So these are waiting for experiment to to confirm. Uh, finally, here is a summary of the CSO's advantages. So first. Uh, good interpretability because very few coefficients are involved. Um, Biased feature construction because we, we construct all the feature within certain complex CT cutoff. No assumption of the descriptive functional form. We don't need the assumption before the, the learning, but we learn the functional form. So uh, managing huge and coherent feature space and uh, applicable to applicable to any material properties, <coughs> including uh, quantitative and uh, uh, classification problems. So I, I want to thank uh, Matthias Scheffler, Lucas, Stefano, Emery, and uh, Daria. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>